Hi, today we're looking at photographing turnstones. There's two species of wader in the UK that are very easy to photograph, turnstones and sandaling. Both of them are widespread and both you can get close to quite easily. On the whole, there are a few places where turnstones are a bit more wary, but generally speaking, they're very tame and approachable. And in fact, in my lifetime, turnstones have evolved so they've moved into our seaside towns and you quite often find them along the seafront where they're feeding on the scraps that humans leave behind bits of fish and chips and sandwiches etc and you'll see them just sitting around underneath park benches where people have been sitting eating their sandwiches so they are a very tame species it's just a question of finding somewhere where they're very photogenic and this is probably my favourite beach to photograph turnstones. It's on the Isle of Sheppey, it's called Shell Ness. And it's my favourite beach because it's so photogenic. The top end of it is full of pebbles and shells. And when the tide is high, as the tide comes in, it's, and the water starts to overlap those pebbles and stones, it's absolutely gorgeous. As well as a very attractive beach, it's got these wooden groins running all along it. And these are very photogenic and the turnstones are very prone to jumping up on top of here and this one is covered in lovely green moss looks absolutely stunning and then further down towards the water you'll get bits of seaweed on them and the turnstones stand there as well just a wonderfully photogenic place turnstones are a very gregarious species so they're easy to spot as a group but it is best to arrange your visit for high tide that is when they're in the most photogenic area, at the high end of the beach. I like it when the water is lapping around their feet. Adds that extra element to the picture. The light is quite important too, and at this moment it's a bit overcast, which doesn't bring out the colours in the shells and the water. But then I had a bit of a bluer sky, and a bit of sunlight shining. This bird is eating a small crab and I anticipated he was going to pick that crab up and walk higher up the beach. But that didn't seem to occur to him. Or perhaps there just wasn't enough meat left on that crab to be bothered with. But eventually he lost it. Just a handful of stills pictures. The shutter speed doesn't really matter when you've got a static bird. This could be two hundredth of a second or two thousandth of a second. You wouldn't see any difference. But this one is a slow shutter speed, 25th of a second. And then some backlit shots on top of those groins. And through the gaps in the groins too. Just lovely settings to take pictures of birds in. You stand more chance of finding them on top of these groins at high tide and they will roost here at the highest peak of the water and have a rest from their normal frenzied feeding. Using the Sony A1 again with the 200 to 600, I have to say the Olympus gear is hardly getting used now unless I need a shorter lens. The autofocus on this is just so superior to any other camera I've owned so far. Olympus are supposed to make an announcement this autumn about a new camera they're being bringing out in 2022. Just hoping the autofocus is catching up with what Canon and Sony are now doing. Still got this small rig on, I'm using this all the time. Makes no difference for stills photography, just for video. Vibration with video is a much bigger problem and this just helps to reduce it, even just the wind blowing. But this big lens acts like a sail and you can see vibration in the viewfinder when you're shooting the video. It's a new tripod head, it's a Vinton Blue 5, which I got quite cheaply because this knob is broken. But, uh, it isn't actually much better than the other video head I had, but I'm just trying it out. I 
the light is just right here and brings out the colours in that lovely beach. When you're photographing birds on the ground, all too often you want to get on the ground too. You want that low angle, throws the background out of focus and makes the bird look more dramatic. If you're doing it on an incoming tide, the beach is drier. If it's outgoing then as the water goes down the hill, this is still very damp. So it is much better on an incoming tide. Lying down on the floor, you're going to get damp, you're going to get wet. Uh, I was wearing the same shirt yesterday, it didn't seem any point in changing it, it's going to get wet again. You could put a camping mat down, that's okay if you're going to be staying in the one spot, but here I know I'm going to have to keep getting up and moving as the turnstones walk about, so I just accept I'm going to get dirty and muddy. Same with the camera, it's going to get covered in sand in an environment like this, it's part of my standard kit in the bag where I carry all my chargers with me. Um, I've got a paintbrush. I've had that paintbrush probably for almost 50 years now. I'm pretty sure it's the same paintbrush as I had when I was a teenager. And it's a half inch paintbrush, I think, with quite stiff bristles. And when you've got sand all over your camera and you can't avoid it, it's going to happen. It's very handy to have a paintbrush of, of an evening when you're cleaning your cameras and downloading all your pictures. Just gets all that sand out of all the crevices. A turnstone clearly showing how it got its name. Looking for food underneath all these little pebbles. And here we're in slow motion, so this is 120 frames per second, still in 4K. You may be able to see that as it flips a pebble up, its bill is open. It raises the top mandible. Whether there's any sort of leverage in this, I don't know. But it's very noticeable they do it. There's some stills pictures coming up later on where you can see this more clearly. As well as being called a turnstone, you could call it a sand digger. And they seem to dig quite big holes. This shot is taken with the 1.4 extender on the 200 to 600 zoom, but the next shot is taken with the clear image zoom on as well. This is a digital zoom, and I'm amazed at the quality you get from it. It's something I'm using more and more when I'm shooting video, but I don't use when I'm taking stills pictures because I shoot RAW and it won't work in RAW format. Notice on the pan handle I've permanently now got bungee rope attached to them on both of my tripods and that's so I don't have to touch the pan handle. Again, you get vibration from your hand. So, okay at the 200mm end, it's when you go to the 600mm end, as soon as you touch that handle, you can see the vibration come into it, even though this is a big professional fluid head. So I've got this bungee rope on there, so once I've got the camera running, I let go of the handle, and when I want to pan, I just pull on the bungee and then you don't get that vibration. Slows your reactions down a bit. As the bird starts to move, you're often um, a bit of a delay before you can start to pull it, but it cuts out that vibration. Very important to me. Being a gregarious species, you do get some interaction between the birds. There was a little bit of fighting going on, but I failed to capture that. And this is the sort of setting I like when the bird is higher up on the ridge, so he separates him from the background. And I like that shot as well with all the sand around its head. And here you can see that open bill as it lifts up this pebble. Very noticeable, it always opens the bill. And this pebble, it couldn't move, but you can see the bill is opened. And that's where I'm wondering if it's using the lower mandible to act as a sort of lever. 
Ever since I was a child, I've always enjoyed watching the behaviour of birds. Rather than being a traditional bird watcher, where you're counting how many species you're seeing, I was much happier watching common birds and just seeing what they did, how they fed. Thanks for watching. <laughs>